welcome everyone to our first in the series of video blogs about creating artwork. We're going to be doing a study on acrylic using colour today. Uh, so what you'll need to start off with with materials is a canvas or a large piece of fairly thick paper, sketch paper. So um, all of your colours that are in your box, assortment of brushes, make sure you've got a really wide one to start with and some fine ones as well. And a sponge, if you can just on your kitchen sponge, would be awesome. So I've already started the wash here. This is what you need to start with, a very watery wash and a really wide brush. You're going to be using white and black, uh, blue together, and lots of water, continuing really nice, long brush strokes all the way across the page. Don't use too much blue, it'll be too dark for the picture to go on top. So a tiny bit of blue, lots of water, and back, blend it all in as you go, back and forth. And you're going to get the background for the birds. Now this won't take very long to dry because it's really nice and watery. And we'll be able to pretty well paint straight on top of it as soon as I've finished here. So if you do what I've just done there and do a big blue stripe in the middle, it's easy enough to just get more water on your brush and blend it into the colour that you have there. Try and make it nice and loose and there you have it. Our background is done. Now, if you have seen on the original one that we have here, there is a very loose uh, background which suggests foliage and flowers and that is just a hint of that. So that's what we're going to do with the sponge work. You need a bit of red and green paint, a sponge, and you're just going to get the smallest amount of red and green and you're going to be dabbing it very lightly to suggest the gum flowers. Now, it doesn't really matter where you put these, green as well. So you've got the green is the, that's really dark, so I'm going to try and sponge a little bit off that. I'm going to put a little bit of white in that. Um, just a bit of suggestion of some foliage there. And as you can see, I'm making this really rough and abstract in style, so you're not really worried about it. It's just a suggestion of leaves in the background. And I'm framing it, so I've got some on either side. You might want to put some in the middle as well. So it's just a bit of background for your birds that are going to be the main feature here. Now I like the sponge because it's really easy to dab and give that suggestion of blurred focus, almost like a photograph, um, without being brushed. And a bit of red to finish that, so I've used both ends. Um, to go. Now we're going to use a um, fairly small to medium brush and this is where we're going to be almost penciling in with a light paint where the branch is going to go. So we need to place our branch and the birds in the frame. I'm going to use a yellow. If you use white it could get lost in the background and yellow is easily covered as well. So the rule of thirds we're using with this one, so instead of dead bang in the middle we're going a little bit lower. So the sort of um, middle Third, if you like, and we're just going to do a nice loose, plenty of water on the brush, sort of sloping branch. Don't make it too thick. And this particular one has got a few side branches coming off, which we we'll also do down there to make it interesting. Um, and it gets slightly smaller as it goes up. Make sure you haven't got dead straight lines, branches never dead straight. Um, and I'm going to keep it basically. That is my outline. We're not going to block in the branches yet because the birds will need to sit on top of that. Once we've got that, the birds are going to be basic shapes to start with. So um, you'll need to decide where your placement is. So we've got six birds to do. The first one, we're doing a basic oval shape. Really, really easy. And lean it towards the way, direction that you think the bird is going to sit. So the next one, we're slightly facing into those two because they're sitting together. And the next one is also quite next to that one there. You can keep them sort of longer or fatter depending on the birds. And the last one is kind of leaning over, so here's a good angle there out of that set. Now the two over here, we've got one that's really leaning over, and the final one is on its side. So you're doing the basic shape of where the bird sits, 
as a starting point. Next thing you do is little circles for the heads, and the heads also dictate what way they're facing. So we've got the head slight circle there, this one on top. And if you make a mistake, don't panic because this is just your underpainted head goes down there, and this one is sitting on top here. Last thing we need to do is place the tail, which is a triangle shape. So that'll be dropping below the branch. All of these are sitting behind the branch, except for the last one, which is kind of on the side. Don't make them too long because the birds themselves, um, most of it's covered by the branch. So tail dropping down there, and the last one, his tail, he's actually sitting over, but it's in the other way. So his tail will go over the top there, joining onto his body. So now we have the basic position of our birds. First thing we're going to do is the body. And for this, we're going to need white, red, and yellow. And this is where we're going to be blending the colors so that they look with the appearance of feathers. So we're going to start off with the lightest, lightest color, that's always easiest. And the rainbow lorikeet has this top half of their body in the lighter color. So I'm going to just basically lock in with yellow first to cover up the blue. And then after that, I'm going to have a color on the brush that is a mix of red and yellow. So we're looking for an orange color. And the way that I'm doing it is I'm going to be using the brush like that, and that's direction of the feathers. Next one, I'm going to add some white to that. So my strokes are going to be lighter on this side. So there's usually one side of any animal or object that is lighter than the other because of where the light is. And because these are facing inwards, it's likely to be the shade and the light will probably be on the outside there which is why I'm looking at them in white. The middle one, can stick with the yellow and make that a blend in between the two colours. So if you use it as in the sort of almost dots, then you're blending in your colours as you go. There isn't one line in between both of them. If you would like, just use plain red to do a, quite a darker colour on the inside. So this is the way of using colour to show the tone rather than using black or uh, dark colours. Okay, so we've done that main body there. Make sure we brush off. The bottom part of the rainbow lorikeet is blue colour. So I'm going to do the same thing there and I'm going to lock in a blue so we cover over the yellow under painting, sitting so that he's still behind the log. Yeah. He also has a blue head. And we have to leave a circle for the eye and we can walk in the rest of it. Now once again with the blue, we're going to have some associated colours to give areas that are lighter and darker in there. And that's where we can bring in some red. And if we add a little bit of red to that, we're going to get a darker, almost purpley colour. Can you see how I'm doing the dots there on that? And that's going to be the red and the blue. So I'm just really adding red onto my brush that's already got blue on it. And I'm doing the same kind of dabs there to make that darker. The same way. But this time you'll be using the lighter blue with white. You'll be getting the lighter on this side. Now remember we don't want a straight line where the two different areas of the bird blend. So you might want to do those dots so it doesn't look so artificial. I'm getting more white on my brush. If it starts blending again, just get it straight white and dab it lightly so it sits on top rather than blending in. And the middle, obviously we go with the regular blue. Um, to cross over those two colours. Okay, so we've already got our main body happening there. 
the tail is yellow with green on the inside. So I always like to add a little bit of white with my yellow because I tend to think it's not so see-through anymore and it makes it a bit more brighter. So the outside of the, can you see I've already noticed that that tail doesn't match where that body is so I'm going to bring it over a little bit further here um, so it follows the line of the bird down. We can always go over that later. And I'm going to do the outside, in fact, the whole lot of the tail in yellow. Because it is a transparent colour, any other darker colour will go over it really, really easily. That means that the green can go over and the green is almost like a little triangle on the inside. And This also, this bird has side wings which we will be putting in just a suggestion draping around with green on the side like that and the same on the other side. So it's like one green smooth line there. And I'm going to go over this again because it was quite uh, a light green tail. Okay, so we're done with the main body part for now. The big of the lower pit is an orange colour. And that's on the side of this one. So I'm going to go with the same orange that I'd already made up before, and a slight bit there. He also has a little bit of orange in the eye. So I'm going to put that as a background colour. This is the time to use a finer brush, so I'm going to switch to my other one here. And I'm going to go back in um, around the eye. I'm firstly going to get a nice dark colour to do the spot in the middle of the eye. So I'm going to go with dark blue that was mixed with a bit of red so it almost looks black and once you've done that the easiest way to make it look real is to add a white dot so the same thing in the paintbrush and just adding the dot right at the top part in there just pure white so you can see how it comes alive now and this is where we need to go over our underpainting of blue and we're going to do a similar um, technique to there the lorikeet has a shape on it's like a cheek about that shape on its um, head so we don't need to worry about that and we're just going to go back, go in detail with the blue. Make sure you join the neck on. So these are seen as circles at the moment, so you need to continue this line so it joins on the body. And put in more detail with that blue in the head around. white toe on the top part here, which make that look slightly different. And this cheek here, strangely enough, something I need, is a yellow flash. If you put yellow over the green, that would be almost the colour that it is, maybe a bit more yellow on the top, and it's a yellow green flash on the side. Now I've already noticed that the beak is not looking particularly uh, stand out there at the moment, so I might have to go over that when it's a bit dry. So you've got bird number one. That is the same process we're going to use for the other birds as we go along. So you've got it all placed out. Now is your chance to use the rest of the techniques go over the other there to do your birds along. I won't need to do all that for you. You can have a go now. The last thing that we do is the log. Now you don't have a brown with you, but a brown is easily mixed using this red and a green and you'll get variations depending on how much red and how much green that you use in that. So the colour that I've got here is a really dark brown. And if you were to want to make that sort of a more reddy purpley brown, you add more red to it like that. And we're going to paint it in. Once again, we're doing the background, so we cover over the yellow. Right up to where the tails come out. Now, as we've learnt with the texture on the leaves, we'll need to do the same thing with the ball because I mean, if we have a solid brown colour, it doesn't look very interesting. 
the idea of painting is to give an impression of texture. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we're doing this brown wall. I'm only going to do up to here because this is the area that I've done so far with the. Okay. I'm going to add some white now. It doesn't matter which water you do this in. I'm going to put it straight on my brush. This is how I work. You can mix the colour beforehand if you like. But I'm going to make, make some areas that look a lighter brown. And remember, the top of the log where the, is probably likely where the light hits and underneath is usually dark. So I'm going to go with um, a white, and I think I'm going to do the yellow on my brush as well. And I'm just doing slight little up and down um, strokes to suggest that that's where the light is hitting the bar. Now, you ask what is, um, how are we going to make it darker? I'm going to add some blue and we'll almost get a black colour. So have a look at the start. Even more blue probably for that. Make a dark brown. And I'm going to put this on the bottom part because that is where the shadow is for the birds. And I'm also going to keep my strokes going the direction of the log because that is how bark grows. Always important to do that. So almost a black colour I've got here using a mix of what we've got already. And you can see the texture in there. There are other ways of creating texture and one of them is kind of scratching in with the end of your paintbrush which looks quite effective. Um, and that shows a kind of, you know, um, insects or whatever that have been burrowing on there and that looks really quite effective. Sometimes you've got the little squiggly worms or you've got some scratched off there and you've got your texture on your bark. So, have a go, we're doing the rest of the log and the birds and see how you go.